Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. Happy Tuesday morning to you guys. We just recapped uh, night one of the finale of Clayton Eckers season of The Bachelor. Tonight is night two. We'll have live streams before and after the episode. And we're going to get into what Nick Vile said on his Bachelor recap. Vile Files. Talks about Clayton lacking empathy, and he says that Clayton hasn't considered the position of power that he is in as The Bachelor, and to sum it up, is too worried about finding love for himself and not sharing that love with others. We'll get into this story and what he has to say. Blake Horstman's response to that, why Clayton might not have the empathy that other contestants had, and do me a favor, find some empathy to follow me on Instagram, at dneals. Was that the right use of that term? Probably not. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We have a ton of new subscribers. Thank you guys for all showing up and being a part of this journey of ours. Hit the like button an odd number of times. All right, Let's get into it. He's with his girlfriend, Natalie, and guest, Christina Harris. And they are, uh, we're going to play two different clips of, um, you know, because the main concerns are like, why did Clayton feel the need to sleep with the other women? And could he have achieved um, the uh, learning who he wanted to be with without having sex with them? And then also after that, uh, why Nick Vile disagrees with Caitlin Bristow. Um, and and uh, we'll get into all that here. Just have a watch. That, I'm not, like, I'm not criticizing. It's just, uh, doesn't that sound kind of weird? Like, I understand the logic. I understand in the pressure situation, he would want to. Like, yeah, I'm sense. getting engaged. But, like, it's so specific. It's like the opposite yeah. for saving it for marriage. Right? Yeah, no, no. Exactly. Um, we need to fuck. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Like, can't you? I mean, let's be honest. We, you can, You can get a pretty good sense of your physical connection with someone uh, and get a pretty good read on your attraction to them and make out and and round a lot of bases. And I think you could have a pretty good idea without actually performing the act of sex. Are, are we now, 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 we believe that, and that's all true. What's interesting with Nick, and we appreciate his opinions here because he's been there as a contestant and as a lead. So we appreciate his opinions because there's a little bit of um of a... Uh, of a uh, equity built there because of his experience. Now, we also know when he was on Caitlin Bristow's season, he kind of came in a few episodes into the season and had sex with Caitlin. Now, she received a lot of hate for that because it was before the fantasy suites, and there she is, just a sex-positive Canadian, being like, really? I didn't think this was going to be a problem at all. Well, uh, we had some angry Americans there, and they had no right to be angry whatsoever. And any sort of uh, dating around, it should have been perfectly fine. But if Nick was to take his own um, sort of... Um, Advice here, he'd say, yeah, shouldn't he have been able to? Sure. But at the same time, you also had sex, so clearly testing the waters, or whatever you want to call it, has value. Be in agreement, or but we not disagree? not on the show. No, 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 I'm just saying it in life. Okay, yeah, yeah in life, yeah. Like, you guys, you guys you, everyone gets <laughs> naked. Like, you like, finger banging on uh, the yeah, show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in the fantasy suite, they could go behind closed doors and right. do, do, do <laughs> something. <laughs> my girlfriend has said finger banging on my podcast. <laughs> Automatic <laughs> promo God. for the episode. Right. Finger <laughs> banging with Natalie Joy. Okay. Wake up, Tuesday. <laughs> wow. But yeah, I, I, you, you can still... He he could they could he could go to the fantasy suite with any of the women, and let's say for whatever reason they didn't have the act of sex. All right, so we get the point. You could do that. It didn't happen. Messed around, took some clothes off. You could have a pretty good sense of like I think we're gonna have a great physical relationship. Do right? you think that? So the question becomes this. Is the implied contract that fantasy suite equals sex, and is the implied contract and maybe it maybe the implication has changed. It's always been that Fantasy Suite was supposed to explore the relationship as far as you guys consensually wanted to go. Now, that doesn't mean there won't be recourse to that. As we know from Caitlin Bristow's season, she hooked up with Nick, and then she ended up being with Sean Booth, and he just couldn't shake the fact, that, you know, he, he couldn't uh, progress a relationship with her for probably a litany of reasons, one of which being that she, uh, how could she be so in love with me if she hooked up with him? You know, people, uh, what sex means is different to different people. That would have been something that Susie would also have gotten upset about. Like, oh yeah, that's true. Like, uh, and they didn't have sex, but like, you finger banged her? Are you serious? I, <laughs> yeah, I feel right. like, I honestly feel like Susie would have been okay with that. Okay, I really do. I don't think Susie had this idea that is. I don't think this is like a Maddie Pruitt thing. I don't mm -hmm. think you know. I just think she. I agree. 
you could tell like she was grappling with the kind of like it almost felt like for me like she you saw her brain go back and forth between like i've always told myself i'd have an issue with this like when you grow up and like from whatever you know her family values and things like that to like adult life where you're like i don't know it's like sex you know like yeah. we kind of like as we get more experience and i don't know where Susie is and like her dating and relationship and and physical you know intimacy life whatever but like as you get out in the dating world i think we all kind of start reassessing how we stand on these topics and i i felt like you kind of see that with Susie a little bit yeah what speaking it, of um, i feel like the biggest thing that clayton said was that he adapted to being the bachelor and being in the bachelor environment and Susie did not yeah i see Susie like maintained what a typical relationship would be and he was like and i commend her on that for like staying true to herself but i adapted to being the bachelor which is not typical and if i was you know going around kissing girls, other girls, and she thought that was fine. How is this any different? There should have been some, like, leeway yeah. because he had adapted to this environment. Uh, it's sort of a good point. Like, you can understand Susie's point. Like, just because we're in this environment doesn't mean I want this to happen. But when everyone says, would you, you know, this is what you get often. Would you want to propose to somebody after they just hooked up with someone else? Well, I just don't value these proposals as traditional proposals. They've known each other for 15 days. That The proposal on The Bachelor doesn't mean as much to me. We had a, a member of the audience, might have been Oliver, who left that uh, voicemail last night. Like, don't you think that you shouldn't be hooking up with someone else right before a proposal? Yeah, I just, we're, we're, we're going to have to change the wording of what the bachelor proposal is because to me, that's just when the relationship begins. That's, you know, let's, let's be honest. Most of these proposals don't make it to marriage anyway. So I don't see that as, as, as what we see it as in a traditional sense. I think that's the biggest problem. I think that's, that, that statement from Clayton is very revealing. I think it explains his point of view. I think it helps explains his point of view with what we saw this episode and what we're going to see yeah. tomorrow. You told me Clay, uh, Caitlin also said, and I want to ask you women, Caitlin had the point of view that these women should you have women. set the expectation beforehand with Clayton before the fantasy suite, which I think a lot of people have that point of view. Uh, what is, do you agree with that statement? I don't, I don't think know. it's their job. Yeah. No. Yeah. So they're asking whose job is it to define the relationship? Whose job is it to set the boundaries? Uh, and again, that comes down to the I I implicit contract. Are we assuming it's it's going to be a non-monogamous relationship? And if we're assuming that, then it would be up to the person who wants to change it from a non-monogamous relationship by defining those boundaries. Now, I think it's it would be a lot smarter for Clayton and, and future leads to have these conversations with people proactively beforehand. I think that's I think that's what we're learning is these conversations are better be, to be had beforehand, so that way if you do catch yourself in a situation, uh, there is a, a, an ability. Uh, you know, it's not uh, too uh, too little, too late. Right. It's not their job. He's the bachelor. He's the leader. Yes. You know? I think right. that's the biggest problem with Clayton. Is I see it to sum it all up is that he hasn't taken any time or any consideration to consider the position of power that he is in as the bachelor. Mm -hmm. And he's taken no time to empathize. He didn't, he didn't empathize with Susie's point of view. He was just focused on, again, like understandable feelings focused on the fact that, oh, maybe she's in it for the followers of the bachelorette or whatever. But Col Clayton's only focus is his, his love journey. And he's just like, I'm the bachelor. And I think he's focused on finding love for himself, not finding love with someone else. And if he took a, the time to consider his position of, position of power, I don't understand why it's the responsibility, as Natalie said, to set the upfront expectations. Yes, whoever's setting the expectations would have done uh, everyone the service of avoiding some of this trauma. Like if whether it was Susie or Rachel or Gabby or Clayton, like they could have done that. But like, and that would have been fine. But if we're talking about they should have done that, I don't, I don't agree with Caitlin at all. Because all right, so this is where I agree with Caitlin and not Nick. Respectfully, Nick is saying that if Clayton understood his position of power, he would have underst understood it's up to him to communicate to the women how he was going to be acting with the other women. And I just think it's a personal thing where like the person who wants the relationship to be uh, moving into the monogamous area needs to be the one to define that. That's my thought. Again, respect Respectfully, it's kind of a battle of semantics. My only, my only gripe with Nick here, uh, uh, respectfully, is that 
when we talk about positions of power, he does. We don't know what was said and not said to Clayton by the producers, how this was edited. There may have been conversations that happened that we didn't hear about where he did talk about knowing, you know, he does have a position of power. Um, it's almost just like stating the obvious. He's the lead. There are 30 women. That is a position of power. It just like privilege, there are different types of positions of power. They might come from having a clout. Nick Vile has a lot of has a big position of power within his company because he's the boss man. He also has it in his relationship as the um, probably more reputable, higher earning person. And also as a male, you know what I mean? So like we understand these things that that it doesn't mean he's a better person. It means his position of power in society comes from where he uh, stands with the privileges that he has that gives him more equity to make decisions. Now, not to say we don't want his girlfriend or any other uh, person in a relationship to, to rise up and have their own position of power. It's just that's where they are in society. Does that make sense? I don't know if that completely makes sense. So I, I believe position of power is related to both equity and also privilege, right? So uh, power, meaning energy, me, meaning ability to influence situation comes both from privilege and it also comes from uh, where you rank within a company. So the initial definition of p position of power was more so built for like within jobs, like Harvey Weinstein had a position of power that he abused by asking or, or demanding women to sleep with him for roles. Position of power is the capacity to influence others based on their acceptance that the influencer occupies a formal position in the organization or group that gives him or her the right to make decisions and to demand compliance. In other words, the power is associated with the position itself and is not dependent on the person in that position. So you might say, oh, they're not in a company. They're not in this uh, specific organization. There is a sort of implied group here in Bachelor Nation in a hierarchy and by um, assuaging, is that the right word? the person in power, the, the, it, it gives you better rank. So you wouldn't want to bite the hand that feeds because there's a bias there towards the per person who's in power. Very complicated. I probably just messed it up in 17 different ways, but I'd, I'd like to hear what you have to say in the comment section with regards to that. So of course, Nick, and Nick would know that he's in a position of power. It's just different. We're obviously talking about Clayton here, but to use Nick as an example, or myself within my community as an example, there's equity and there's privilege for having influence over others. And by not acknowledging that, Nick is saying that Clayton is doing it disservice. And my thought is that it's a non-monogamous dating competition until it's not. And the person who wants to take that mon to the monogamous level, uh, in Susie's case, by ha telling Clayton to kind of set boundaries around, I don't want to be with someone who just had sex with others. I believe it's the person who wants to go monogamous that takes that lead. Whereas Clayton, his job, at least in his mind, has been to pursue all relationships until one works but also I do understand Nick's point that's like, all right, geez, like, yeah, pursue all the relationships as you see fit, but also understand that you're thinking about you and not about everyone else. But it is called The Bachelor, not a bunch of people date a guy. It's called The Bachelor. So, right, that's what it is. Blake Horseman says, Clayton doesn't seem to have enough empathy in these moments because he wasn't in love with Michelle and didn't get his heart broken on national television. The leads have a better shot at finding love if they are from the top three and have fallen in love in this environment. Blake also has been the um, center of a lot of public shaming that happened on Bachelor in Paradise between him and Kaylin. Uh, and because of that, he can empathize to a greater level with what it's like to deal with online bullying. Uh, some people say empathy is not necessarily having been in a different position, but imagining yourself in that position. So while Clayton could have empathy for these people and or these, the, the other, the woman here, he just hasn't been in that situation. So it might be harder for him to achieve that empathy fully because he doesn't know what it's like. And if he had been in that situation, like Nick had been in that situation, he might understand, um, I'm not going to just toss around the love word. I'm not just going to toss around sex. And we might say, oh my gosh, how could he not realize that? Well, we're not in that position. He literally went from, you know, uh, finishing in X whatever level place on Michelle season, never getting past like a very superficial level to being thrown as thrown in as the lead. And, um, you know, clearly in over his head, it doesn't mean he didn't make wrong choices. It means like those were as preventable as they were happened because of um, either blissful naivete or um, just, you know, too focused on not messing up his thing, you know, on his end. And then he clearly um, uh, had collateral damage. At least he's got a hot take. That not only are they upset about two people all by themselves, 
but we assume what happens at San Suite, Suite, but he just confirmed to their parents, to the nation. So she's mm. it's bad audio. She's saying to the that world. Would piss me off. She's, she was pissed off because Clayton outed that he had sex t to the world. That would feel like a breach of like in, intimacy. She said it's a breach I know. of intimacy. Somebody talking about your sex life on national television is terrible, at least. Tell me about it. I've had it happen. So then Blake says, yeah, it sucks having someone talk about your sex life national on TV. And of course, Blake exactly had that happen to him. <laughs> I did it too. It's <laughs> I hate agreeing with Nick, but he's making really good points. And for him to have been more empathetic and just put I think the biggest thing I'm, is... He's not empathetic. And I think the reason he is not being as empathetic as he should be is because he did not fall in love with Michelle. He did not make it to the end and know what it feels like to get his heart ripped out of his chest and broken up with on national television. This is why I think they should always pick the lead from the final three, at least. So they go through fantasy suites. They go through all this because they don't get it. You don't get it unless you've lived through it. Very good points there from Blake. And of course, uh, it's not necessarily, uh, it, it doesn't excuse what went down. But hey, like we've always said, you know, you try the best with the information you have. Clayton didn't understand uh, maybe the power that he had in these positions, didn't realize that they were going to fall for him hard. And while he knew he was going to end up with hopefully his number one, he was going to create a lot of damage in the way. And that's the show. And that's why there's so much drama. Let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. We'll be right back. Bye, everyone.